All right, this next step is instead of using the mouse to control an object, we're going to use the keyboard to control an object. I'm starting off about the same spot I did before. I've got a function that takes in x, y, and draws a stick figure wherever I specify. Down here, I'm drawing it at 0, 0 to begin with, and I'm going to adjust this so that I work with the keyboard instead. To get started with, the keyboard is a lot more complex. Unlike the mouse, where I get an exact XY location of where the mouse is at, I don't have an exact XY location of where the keyboard is at. I need to start at a specific location and keep track of that location. To do that, I'm going to create a couple variables, one for X and one for Y, that will represent the X coordinates and Y coordinates of my stick figure. So to begin with, the stick figure is going to be drawn at x, y location 10, 10. The next thing that I'm going to come up with are a couple variables that are going to represent the speed that the stick figure is moving at. With the mouse, we simply set the x, y location based upon where the mouse is. With the keyboard, we actually kind of need to figure out when you press down on the up arrow, how fast is the guy going? Now, in this case, I'm going to create a variable called x speed which will be your speed across the screen and set it to zero. It'll be positive if the guy's moving to the right. It'll be negative if the guy's moving to the left. A Y speed will control positive if he's going down, negative if he's going up. To begin with, the guy's not moving at all, so I'm gonna set them to zero, zero. That I've got these variables right here. The guy is always gonna be drawing at zero, zero still, right? Because right now I'm set to 0, 0. It doesn't matter what I have up here for variables. If I'm not using them down here, then the guy's always going to be drawn at 0, 0. What I need to do, take these coordinates, x, y coordinates, and move them down here into this function so that the guy's being drawn at these x, y coordinates. That's easy. Great, I've got that done. If I run the program, the only thing that's going to happen is the guy's going to be drawn at 10, 10. I haven't done anything to adjust the x coordinates or y coordinates or the x speed and y speed. This is where things get to be a little bit more complex. To do this, I'm going to work here in this event loop. Specifically, I'm going to tab in right about here and I'm going to add an event. If the event type, rather than hitting the kit quit button, I'm going to look to see if the person presses any key down. Note how this is lined up. In this case, this I for this event and this I are lined up. I am not putting the I over here because if I put the I over here, I won't process it until the events are done. The looping for the events happens right in here at this tab level. If I put the I over here, it'll only get for the if statement, then it'll only execute if the event is type quit, and not only process key down events when the person's actually quit the game. That's no use whatsoever. So as we add events, make sure that they line up with the quit event that we already have had before. All right, as soon as the key goes down, I need to change the speed of the guy based upon what key has been hit. If a guy goes up, if the guy goes down, left, right, I need to take a look at those different types of keys. So I'm going to look at if event.key is equal to pi game dot k underscore left. Then I want to adjust my speed. If the guy's going left, I need to adjust the x coordinate, the x speed or the y speed. Naturally, I need to adjust the x speed, right? And I'm going to set it equal to negative 3. This will be 3 pixels per frame. If I put this together and I think the guy's moving too slow, I could change that to like negative 5 instead, and he'll move at 5 pixels per frame. Now I just need to fill in the rest. If event.key equal to pi game dot k right. Instead of setting x speed to negative 3, I want to increase the pixel count. I'm going to do positive 3. If 
if I'm going up, I want to set the y speed equal to negative 3. Okay, that was a lot of code to add. Unfortunately, I'm only halfway there. This process is key down events. When you let up on the key, that is a different event. I need to reset the speed back to zero if the person lets up on the key. So I need basically about the same thing. In fact, I can just go ahead and copy this, but for a key up event. Key down is when you press it down. Key up is when you let go of the key and the key goes up. So I've made a duplicate here, but now I'm going to do up. And for each one of these, I'm going to set the speed to zero. One of the most common mistakes that people make with this type of code is to mess with this event loop. Take a look here. This starts a loop that processes every event. And this would be like keystrokes. It would be clicks with the mouse or other types of event that happens with the window. And everything that is processed is indented one. For instance, if there is both a click and a keystroke within the same time frame, that is within the same 1 20th of a second, this loop will go through twice. Once for the keystroke, and once for the mouse. It'll process the entire list of events for that particular 1 20th of a second. A lot of times there's only one event that occurs and things are just fine if you don't happen to actually do this as a loop. And where people sometimes to that point is if right here you start adding code. I don't know what X would be, but you start adding code right here. This is right in the middle of a game processing event and you're doing something that has nothing to do with event processing. You try to run it, it's going to say, oh, invalid indent type. Well, you're not really sure what you're doing, so you select this. You unindented one, and for the most part, at this point, your code will work. Why? Your code will still work. Your code will still work because events are being processed here in this loop, and whatever the last event was will still be stuck in the event variable, and this will work. But if you have two events that happen at the same time, such as a key down and a key up event, a person hits the keyboard really fast, the key down event will get processed up here, but there's no code to handle key down. Then the key up event happens, and down here you have the key up event happen, and no key down event was processed for it. That can lead to your keystrokes essentially being out of sync. Or you could end up with a key down event that's processed, but a key up event that's not processed, and you end up with a guy that's moving even though the keyboard isn't stuck. Keep in mind then when you work with this, if we're processing events, if we've got event.type, that type of thing, that needs to happen inside of this loop and it needs to be indented inside of this loop. Don't start sticking unrelated code to the event processing in here. Keep all the event processing happening. Right here. And you can put extra code for game logic down here outside of that event loop. Don't mess up the event loop, and then you'll be okay. All right, I've now set the speed, plus or minus. If I run the game, the guy's still not going to go anywhere, even if I'm pressing the key down and key up. I'll set the speed, but I haven't adjusted the person's location based upon their speed. That's pretty easy. I'm going to consider that part of the game logic. And I'm now going to do, if the x coordinate, I'm going to add to it the x speed. And the y coordinate, I'm going to add to it the y speed. If from up here, the x speed or y speed is set to 3 or negative 3, it will then adjust the location of where the guy is with the x coordinate. So remember, I'm tracking two things. I'm tracking where the guy is and what speed that he's moving. Don't mix the two up. When I run it, it's like this. I press the down key. Great, the guy moves. I press the right key. He moves over this way, up. I can even press the down and right key, and I'll have 
both speeds set, so it works pretty well. If I hit the right key and the left key at the same time, whatever key I hit last is taken, and as I let up on the keys, the speeds reset back to zero. I'm just going to add a little bit of print statements here just to make it all the more apparent what's going on. Now when I run the game, you can see as I press down, the Y speed goes to 3 and my Y coordinates keep adding up. And as I move the guy around here, I'm hitting the right arrow, X speed is 3, and the X coordinates are going up. I let off, the speeds reset back to 0, and the X and Y coordinates don't change at all. Okay, obviously much more complex than using the mouse. Still, not too bad. Doing a keyboard movement basically involves three main parts setting an initial speed and location. Here's the speed, there's the location of our guy. Then down here we add to the event processing loop key down and key up events to set the speed and based upon the speed, the third step, we adjust the X and Y coordinates. That's how we get movement with a keyboard. The movement with a game controller is actually fairly similar and we'll discuss that in the next video.